Hi, I'm Stan Emmert of Rainmakers TV. We're a documentary series that with the uh, flagship station of KBTC, a PBS affiliate located in Tacoma, Washington. And what we do at Rainmakers, our mission is to communicate stories of leadership, innovation, and social responsibility that leads to global transformation. That means that we're going to be showcasing the heroic efforts made by impoverished people around the world who every single day they strive to lift themselves up out of their circumstances. But we're also showcasing those philanthropic individuals and organizations and those entities that can help people and especially with new technologies. And we found something that I think is really, really exciting that can help not only people who are in impoverished circumstances or in developing countries, but actually basically in every single country around the world. The name of the entity is NanoIce, and it is very, very interesting. Craig Rominger, President and CEO. Uh, Snybjorn Goodnison, who is the inventor, are both with us today. Uh, so, Craig, tell me just basically, NanoIce, what is it? Uh, NanoIce is molecular ice technology. We manufacture this is one of the smallest ice products in the world. And what that does is the ice itself is smaller on an individual basis than many of the foodborne uh, pathogens and bacteria that look to infect fresh foods. Uh, and that gives us the ability to extend shelf life, maintain the highest quality, and prevent weight loss associated with the decay and bacterial infection. Hmm. I want to go ahead and, and get the website up. It's nanoiceusa.com. Um, encourage you to go to that because you're going to learn an awful lot more. And you know what I want to do right now is I want to get the inventor in, uh, Snybjorn. Yeah. Um, you uh, know a little bit about ice because that's kind of where you grew up, right? Yeah, I come from Iceland and uh, uh, we uh, tend to think a lot about ice and temperatures over there because that uh, plays a vital role in our, our life. But uh, the, uh, the reason why I got into the, the uh, designing of, uh, of ice machines and focusing on the, the quality issues is because uh, not only in Iceland but uh, in other countries, uh, people tend to uh, compromise a bit on the quality side uh, as a result of handling and temperature control and all, all these issues. Well, ar around the developing world, especially if you're eating stale food or bad food, I mean, you, you get sick. Yeah, and, exactly. then it, and then it's a health problem. Yeah. Well, what I want to do is I want to talk about some of the, the specifics of the uses. And if we can go to the website, we're going to be doing that. But one of the first uses is uh, safeguarding your food. So tell me about more about how the nanoized technology safeguards your food in a way that a refrigerator doesn't. Uh, well, refrigerators air cooling, which is really, you know, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because we've been refrigerating for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. um, refrigeration is really a technology that controls the temperature of the environment. Our product safeguards that food product with a hundred percent surface coating and maintains the temperature of the product. And that's what's different about our So approach. from wherever it is, whether I'm a, f a fisherman or whether I am a farmer out in the field. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. Raw material chilling, what does that mean? Uh, well, the chilling is the initial cool down phase before any meat, for example, can be processed and cut. There's a phase there where you need to cool it down. And so when we speak to that, we speak directly to that phase right after catch, mm -hmm. slaughter, or harvest, where the product needs to be cooled down to kind of stop the aging uh, and things along those lines. Snabjorn, um, you're coming, growing up essentially in the fishing industry where in Iceland it's, it's everything. Yeah. Um, what's the difference in this and flash freezing? Well, uh, in the freezing, it's normally uh, done as, as Craig is saying with with uh, uh, air cooling or air freezing, uh, mm -hmm. IQF freezers, and uh, the higher the temperatures uh, you have in the product going into the freezers, the more moisture is going to create by the time it's up to or to, down to freezing level. What we're doing, we're actually preserving the natural juice in the product by cooling it a lot faster in a wet environment, so the moisture is not lost from the product. Mm -hmm. Plus the freezer uh, capacity is boosted because we're already under zero degrees Celsius uh, by the time we go into the freezers. I want to go back to the website because I want to go uh, more on, on the attributes. Uh, but I uh, just wanted to do to finish up though on, on this natural or the, the, the raw material chilling. Mm -hmm. um, so this could be used for more than food, could it not? Absolutely. Uh, we're looking at uh, different things now. We're currently involved with a leading research institution uh, in the beginning of a trial to investigate whether or not we have efficacy in human organ and tissue preservation. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next mm -hmm. use. Yield preservation. What does that mean? 
Oh, it's really a benefit. It's interesting. Once we started uh, uh, using our ice and different raw materials, we found out that the yields that are lost or the product weight um, throughout the process is, is just exhausted into the atmosphere due to things called lipid oxidation, mm -hmm. dehydration, bacterial infection. The weight of the product is reduced through the, the production process. Mm -hmm. We don't allow that to happen. So we've got two more attributes of it. Let's see, I believe. Let's go to the next one. Uh, and that next one is uh, nutrient and flavor retention. And I really get this because, uh, I mean, it seems to me that when I've got a, uh, a fresh piece of fruit mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it's very flavorful, but it doesn't take long before the flavor gets to be really bad. Breaks down very fast. And that's where temperature plays a key role. So the, the sooner you uh, uh, chill the, the product, whether it, it's fruit, vegetable, fish, or meat, or whatever, the sooner you can bring it down to uh, a desirable storage temperature, the better, and the better quality you preserve. When you're losing uh, weight in products, it's not like it's uh, dripping water. It's actually dripping the, the natural juice from the product, containing you know, vitamins, uh, nutrition, and things like that. So weight loss is really not a good thing in terms of you know, food quality. Now the last attribute is uptake energy, and when I saw that I was thinking, hmm, what is that? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> uptake energy is a process that we found happens when um, certain products are immersed in our ice. Uh, we've shown the ability to reverse early stage lipid oxidation and bruising in certain meat products. And that's really uptake energy. And what that is, is our ice provides an environment in which the aminos and triglycerides that are exhausted through lipid oxidation can actually be re-upped into the meat or prevented from actually exhausting uh, from that meat. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go to some actual pictures here. And, you know, I'll warn you, these aren't the easiest things to look at, but it is the start of food. So, Snabjorn, please tell us we're looking at a fish. Yeah, this is uh, North Atlantic cod. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I took these photos uh, several years ago uh, in a trial where we were comparing the use of conventional ice to preserve fresh fish on board the boats. Uh -huh. And this was a trial uh, uh, for 14 days storage. And we are simply comparing the result of, of, of uh, our ice and the flake ice. And there's your ice right there. And there's, there's our wow, ice. it looks much fuller and... It looks like new. Yeah. You know, when, we, uh, when we were uh, looking at this fish... Yeah, uh, let's actually go to the next picture. This one, you know, could be a little rough, but I mean... But this is the gills. This is inside the fish head. So mm -hmm. after 14 days at sea, in your nano ice, it still has red gills. Yeah. yeah. They haven't turned gray or darkened. No, they're beautiful. Wow. So we talked a little bit about meat. We talked a tiny bit about fruit. Let's actually go. Uh, how do you see this application in fruit? Well, I think this, uh, the, the same goes for fruit and vegetable as for any other uh, raw material or food in general. Uh, it all uh, uh, goes into temperature control. So the, the ideal temperature should be achieved uh, as soon as possible for any storage. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're harvesting uh, fruit or vegetables, the ideal thing is to drop them into a, an ice bath containing the, the nano ice and to achieve uh, temperature uh, a little above freezing level, that is the lowest you can go. And the sooner you do that, the longer the fruit will last the less moisture will be lost and the quality is preserved. So is this the kind of product that could be useful in a, in a developing country along the equator? For example, where there's a lot of fruit that's grown, oh, but it spoils very, very quickly. Yeah, definitely. Not only fruit, but also fish. I've seen fish go off, you know, extremely fast. And the waste there should be, you know, uh, greatly uh, reduced with this technology. And that's our aim. Let's talk about the company just a little bit. Something that I was very impressed with. Let's actually go to the next slide. Uh, you know, being somebody that's, that's involved in, in uh, corporate social responsibility. The next slide, let's go to the next click because there's a company Credo. And, and, and I saw that and I thought, the company Credo, that's something for a brand new company. And that's essentially kind of, <laughs> what, what is this? I mean, here you're, you talk about your first responsibility is to the consumer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and what's interesting about this, Stan, is we wrote this before we did anything else before we wrote our business plan, before we did any financial forecasting, mm -hmm. we in conference calls between here and Iceland decided to adopt a credo. Um, we're all big fans of Jim Collins and so mm -hmm. we've kind of realized that the successful companies have done things over and over again and there's a lot of consistency between the companies that have been able to make an impact and be successful. 
So your first responsibility to the consumer. Yeah. The second responsibility is to your team members, your employees, and I guess in contractors. Mm -hmm. Your third responsibility is to the communities that where you live and work and fourth to your shareholders. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we feel like if we, we, we are responsible to our consumers, our team members, and our stakeholders before our shareholders, that they'll make a good profit as well. They're telling yeah. me it's time for us to wrap it up. Uh, Nano Ice has a company. Where are you right now? Uh, we're in Seattle. Uh, we are selling. We've got 20 installations. Uh, at, uh, we're installing a, uh, in the Pike Place market, fish market, in uh, January, and that'll be our 20th installation worldwide. Uh, we're growing very quickly now, and uh, things are going great. Craig Snobbjorn, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. I'm Stan Emmer of Rainmakers TV, and we're going to change the world through showing all of those who are helping make it happen. Take care.